In this video, I will show you how to reassemble and install the tension assembly on a Singer 301. I'm Jen with Sewing Machine Rehab and I show you how to restore, repair, and maintain your vintage sewing machines. This particular video is part of a larger series. It's called Full Singer 301 Restoration and I provided a link to the playlist for you in the description box below. If you took time to like this video, thank you very much. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel so you always know when new content is out. Now let's get started on putting the tension assembly back on this machine. Okay, we are ready to reinstall the tension assembly back onto our Singer 301. I want to go over the parts that you will need today. So the tension assembly itself has 14 parts. There are two extra here because we are also going to reinstall one of the thread guides. I just like having it back in place when I get the assembly back on. So when I set it to zero, I have this one thread guide. I just find it helpful. You also will need the top of your machine, the top cover, and we're not going to bolt it down. We're just going to set it on top because again, when we zero out our tension, we will need the thread guides on the top as well. So the parts that you need, and I'm going to tell you their technical names, and I hope I get them all right. They have very long names for being such little parts. This part here is called the slack thread and tension guide. It's what's going to set up. We're going to put it on the machine first before we put the tension assembly on. You will need that and the screw that holds it on. You will need the tension stud and the pin that goes down inside the stud. That's how our tension pin releasing lever does its job. It needs this little funny little pin. You will need the thumb nut for the tension stud, which is this piece here, and the set screw for the stud. This piece here with the long finger on it is called the take up spring thread guard. You'll need that as well as the thread take up spring. And this is a new spring, it's aftermarket. The spring that came off of this machine didn't work. I have put this tension on two or three times before shooting this video and definitely I had a problem with the spring. I replaced the spring. Everything worked great. So keep that in mind. <laughs> you may need to invest in a new spring. There are two tension discs on a 301 and let me talk about these too because these can be rusty. I don't know why they tend to get rusty, but they do. And these were actually pretty rusty. So after I cleaned them and used some rust remover on them, the way I made these nice and smooth, which is very important and shiny, is I have 3000 grit sandpaper and I use it while it's wet to lightly sand any rough parts off of the surface of these discs because these discs are going to go together like this and the thread's going to travel in between them. If this is all rough, the thread is going to catch. I'm not going to have my true tension because the thread's getting caught in the disc. So you do need to make sure that they are nice and smooth. However, you decide to polish them is up to you, but that's how I did it. Then you will need the tension indicator flange, and that's this part here with the plus and minus. You will need the tension spring, and that's the one that's shaped sort of like a beehive. The tension indicator flange washer, which is this part with the finger that comes up. And just so you know, your finger may be curved like this, or it may just stick straight up. It doesn't matter. 
it's not bent if it's curved they just were made differently and so sometimes i see ones that it's sticking straight up and sometimes i see ones that it has a curve doesn't matter it will still work either way this is called the tension indicator flange so tension indicator flange washer tension indicator flange that's the one with the numbers and then this is just the tension indicator i may have called it a flange when i picked it up the first time no tension in indicator tension indicator flange <laughs> so i think that we have covered all the parts you shouldn't have really rust on these but if you do you can treat them maybe this spring would get some rust check the threads of the tension stud and down inside the thumb nut for it make sure there's no rust there but now we can get started putting the tension back on and then zeroing out our tension so the first thing that we will put on is this one particular thread guide let's just go ahead and get that done so it's not mixed up with our other parts and you will notice there's a little cutout in the side of your machine here this wire fits inside that cutout so it just kind of holds it in place and it helps you line it up you just kind of have to work it into that groove and then you can put your screw on and just screw it down all the way just like that so one thread guide back on the machine the next thing that we will want to grab is the slack thread and tension guide and that is this piece and let's talk about this for a moment so it has a screw the screw goes through this hole right here and you'll notice that it's long shaped that's because this is adjustable and how it sits on the machine we are just going to put it on sort of in the center of this slot today but later when we do our first test sewing that's when we will check the stroke and tension of the uh, check take up spring the spring right here so then we may decide to loosen this screw and twist it a little to the right or the left but we really don't know where it needs to be until we start sewing so you'll notice machined around this hole there's just a little lip it fits right onto that lip it goes on with this finger pointing towards you and on the left side which there's really no other way to put it so but just so you know if you are confused that is how there we go and then when i tighten this down i'm just kind of letting it settle in the center of that long opening and tighten it down the next thing that we want to do is put our tension stud back into the machine and you will want to oil the end of your stud and then find the pin this little pin it looks almost like a nail it goes into the stud with this flat end pointing towards this opening here you cannot put it in through the back it won't fit you do have to drop it down into the center and i would recommend a light coat of oil there that's traveling inside the stud every time you raise and lower your presser bar so a little oil won't hurt now that we have the pin inside the stud we're going to seat it inside this hole that's in the body of the machine you can see right in there and we also are going to make sure that this opening here is turned horizontally when we look at the front of the machine we'll want it to be horizontal not like this not like that but horizontal so we're going to put it in and push it all 
the way back. Make sure you have it pushed all the way back. Then we have to move to the side of our machine and grab our little set screw and actually secure that stud. And that is using this hole right here. So first I'm going to kind of eyeball my stud and make sure it's turned horizontally. Then I'm going to hold it in that position and I'm just going to put that set screw in. Make sure it's pushed back all the way and then tighten down your set screw. And one thing you'll notice is that your set screw isn't going to go and be buried inside that hole. It's actually probably gonna stick out a little bit. You might even see some of the first threads on the set screw, that's fine. This one doesn't sink all the way down into the hole. There we go. So I push this in and I'm tightening this down and my screw is sticking out here just a little bit. It's fine. I can't pull my tension stud out anymore. Everything is okay. Now what I want to do is just spin it around and I want to check to make sure that I did actually get this turned in the right direction. So that is positioned perfectly horizontally. That's what I want. Now we can put the rest of the tension assembly together. So the parts that you need to grab next, we're gonna put four parts together on all at once. And you will need the take up spring thread guard, two tension disc, which is all you should have, as well as your thread take up spring. This take up spring thread guard has this finger here. It's going to go inside this hole right here once we push it all on the machine. But I don't want to just put this on because actually my two tension discs are going to go behind it like that. The disc go together, they're, they're round, they have a concave shape. Those concave parts go together. Don't stack them like you would stack your dishes, that's wrong. They also don't go like this, they go like that. Your thread will now slide in between them. So take your two discs, stack like that, and put them against your take up spring thread guard. So here's the finger coming out. They're pushed along that back side. Then take your take up spring which is this one, and see how our finger's coming out the back? This has a long spring coming out the back. There's a gap right here. I want to slide these three parts in between that gap. So the long part of the spring is sticking out of the back just like this finger, and the front of the spring is in the very front of all these four parts. Now is when I can slide them all together onto my machine. And I'm just gonna get it so I know all four parts are on, and then I'm going to stop. Because this spring, I want to pay attention to how this little loop is hanging. I don't want the little loop this way or this way. I actually kind of want it to be hanging down towards the ground, as vertical as I can get it. Then I'm gonna slide everything back until that finger rests in the hole. All my parts are on. This is hanging down towards the ground and it doesn't spin around anymore. That's because inside that spring is a little piece of wire that's caught on one of those 
little star points that are on the tension stud, if that makes sense. So those are on. Now I can grab my tension indicator, which is the plus minus, and it's going to go on the machine and it's not going to go this way, even though you kind of want to do it that way. Turn the ugly inside part towards you. So the plus is on the right and the minus is on the left and then slide it on just like that. Then you can take your little tension spring or your beehive spring. It's going to go on and there is controversy about this in the sewing world, but I always used to put the spring on. So this is a little teacup. You pour your tea in the cup. So you have to have the cup facing up and I would put it on that way. I have learned over my time of fixing many of these machines, it doesn't matter. And to prove my point, I'm going to put it upside down so I'm dumping my drink out. Either way, it will be fine. It just needs to go on like that. Now you can get your little tension indicator flange washer, and that's uh, the one with the finger. If your finger has a curve, when you put it on, make sure that finger is pointing at you, towards you, not away from you. If it is just a straight finger, then just make sure it's pointing up to the ceiling. So if it's curved, it's pointing at you, they're both pointing up to the ceiling and slide that on. Two parts left. Now we want to grab our tension indicator flange. That's the one with the numbers. And I want you to notice something really quick because once I get these two parts on together, you're not going to be able to see it. Do you see all these little holes around the inside? Now check out your thumb nut. It has this little pin on the back side. If you look and you put them together, you'll notice that pin fits in those holes. When we go to set our tension and zero it out, you're going to want to be paying attention to where this pin is resting. It should never be resting on the metal in between the holes it should be always resting in a hole so you've seen it now when i start talking about what to do you know what i'm talking about it's going to rest in a hole so take the tension indicator flange and slide it on your machine and i just point like the two the one or the two up okay i don't want to have it over to the zero yet now I'm going to take my thumb nut with that little point pointing away from me and I'm going to start gently spinning it on. And this may take a couple tries because your stud, you know, those pieces of metal, they can kind of get pried apart or squeezed together a little bit too much. So you may have to kind of fiddle with it. But once you get it started, kind of push back all the other parts and just give it several good turns until you feel like it is resting in one of the holes on the tension indicator flange. Once I do that, I should be able to turn. So I'm turning counterclockwise, which would be less tension. And you'll notice it didn't stop at zero. It always stops between zero and nine. So that is zero, technically. And then I can turn and tighten it down for my heavier tensions. But there's a few other things we wanna check before we actually zero this tension out. So let's look back into the nose of the machine. Okay, why do I want you to look into the nose of your machine? Because I wanna make sure that your tension pin releasing lever is doing the job it's supposed to do. So raise your foot up and lower it. Watch here when I raise my foot. Do you see that? 
just that slight bit of movement. That is when I'm raising my foot, this tension pin releasing lever is pressing on that little tiny pin that we put inside the stud and it's pushing our tension disc apart so the thread can move between them freely. It needs to do this. If it doesn't, it's <laughs> going to give you problems. So make sure that that is happening. If it's not, it may be that you need to just tighten this thumb nut down a little bit more. Maybe you have it on just a little bit too loose already. Try that first, but you should definitely see a little bit of movement there. Now we can zero out our tension. Okay, I have raised the camera up to a little bit of a funny angle because before we actually thread this up, I want you to take your check spring, which remember I had you leave it so it was pointing kind of down at the floor. I want you to take that spring, and do you see this finger right here on our slack thread and tension guide? Pull that spring up, and you may have to pull it towards you and up and get that spring so it's resting on top of that finger. That is how it should be. Then you should still have a snap when you move it all the way up. But go ahead and position it there. That's where it's going to stay. Now you can go ahead and put the top onto your machine and I'm just setting it down on mainly because I want to use the thread guides on it. Okay, so the thread that I would recommend that you use when you zero out your tension is not just your regular polyester thread. Actually go for something more like, this is a machine quilting thread and it is 100% cotton. It is just a little bit heavier than the thread you might use on some of your other projects, but it is really helpful to have this little bit heavier thread. So this is machine quilting cotton thread. Take your thread and set it on the spool pen in the back of your machine. Then there'll be a little hook here there we go. <laughs> Slide it through the hook here and down through this thread guide here. Once you've done that, this is where this slack thread and tension guide are really going to help you out because the shape of this metal right here lines up perfectly with your tension disc. So it's literally going to guide the thread between the two discs for you raise your presser foot so there's plenty of room and space in between those discs and just slide it right along this metal here up in between the two discs. Then I find it helpful to use my thumb and press the thread against the machine so it, I can pull it taut and I'm going to pull until I hear a click. When I do that, the spring's going to come back down and you're going to see that this little finger back here on the take up spring thread guard has caught that thread and now it's resting in front of that finger and it'll be down underneath your spring as well. Then. I just like to use that guide. Now this is where I'm gonna stop threading the machine. I want to zero out the tension and what that means is that when you have your tension indicator set to zero and the foot down, you're going to set how much tension is on the thread at that moment and it should be very little. In fact, when you pull the thread at this point, you'll have very little movement of the spring. So this is really up to you how you do this. 
I know that Singer recommends 5 to 15 grams of tension on the thread when you pull it at zero. I prefer to lean more towards 15 or 20, but you can either set it by just looking at this check spring and how it's moving, and it should have a little bit of movement at zero. And truly, my guess is if I pulled this, if I used my little thread tension meter that I got from the Singer Featherweight Shop, I'm probably more like at 25 or so. So let's test it out. So if you've watched a lot of videos about Singer 301s or any setting attention on a sewing machine, you might have already seen one of these. They are really worth the less than $10 investment I'll be very honest with you so I'm going to clip this little clip on to this thread while my tension is set to zero and then I'm going to start pulling up and it's going to tell me how many grams of tension I have on my thread at zero so you might not be able to see this when I start moving up, but let's see where I have it set right now. I know it's going to be on the heavier side. It's coming in at like 20 or 22, which for me, I'm kind of fine with that. But if you're setting this on your own without one of those little meters, you might want to have just a little bit less movement in your check spring here. So the way you're gonna do that is take this flange and push it back and then spin your thumb nut back one hole, go counterclockwise and just one hole on the flange and then check it again. This feels really good Let's see where we're at, but just clipping it on. Now it's between 15 and 20. It's kind of bounces around, so it's hard to tell exactly. So this is where I would leave it. So set at zero, just a little bit of movement on the spring, not a lot. What happens when I move it up to three? Oh, look, suddenly a lot more tension. Check how that spring is traveling. And the more tension I add, the more my spring decides it wants to move. So that looks good to me. I want to make sure that when I set this to zero, though, that when I raise up my presser foot, I'm still seeing those tension disc move, even if it's just a little bit. So at three or four, when my foot is down, I should definitely have a lot of tension. But then when I raise my foot, it should just pull freely through. That's telling me that the tension disc are coming apart. And it is. So that's it. That's how you reassemble your tension assembly and set your tension to zero. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. This is something that can be kind of confusing. I do recommend this. I think it's really helpful, but I also feel like you definitely can go with at zero, the movement of the spring, barely perceptible. So when we come back, we are going to make sure everything is properly oiled and greased on the machine. Before I start running this too much, I definitely want to get some grease on the gears in the bottom and the top of the machine and get some oil on all of the parts that are going to be moving. So we are very close to being finished. Good job. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.